We know that trunk ports are members of every VLAN on the switch. That's how they get their job as trunk ports done. But on occasion, that universal VLAN membership results in unnecessary forwarding of traffic, which in turn results in extra work for our switches and also sucks up our bandwidth. We really hate that. And this is a situation where that exact thing would happen. Switch one has hosts in VLANs 20 and 30. So we know that both trunk ports that we see here the connections to switch two and three are going to be members of those VLANs and they're going to forward traffic out for those VLANs. The thing is, switch two has no host in VLAN 30, switch three has no host in VLAN 20. So there's no reason for switch one to forward VLAN 30 traffic over to switch two. There's also no reason for switch one to forward VLAN 20 traffic over to switch three. But by default, that's exactly what's going to happen. But we can deny traffic the ability to cross that trunk. We can filter it before it goes across on a per VLAN basis with the command switch port trunk allowed VLAN followed by enough options to allow you to come up with any combination of permitted or denied VLANs that you need. Now let's go back to our list here. What we want to do is prevent traffic from VLAN 30 for going from switch one to switch two. We want to prevent VLAN 20 traffic from going from switch one to switch three. So we've double checked that, everything's good. And we're gonna use a lab that we were looking at earlier with one, two, and three. And notice that we did not have the port numbers on that diagram. How can I get those? Well, one way I can get them is by doing show interface trunk right here. And that's gonna show you where you're trunking. And let's, let's go to switch one instead. If I run show interface trunk, it's going to show me my true two trunking interfaces, which are two and three, but it's not really showing me who I'm trunking with. Now, of course, most likely in a lab environment, fast Ethernet 02 is going to lead to router two. Switch, switch, excuse me, switch two. And fast Ethernet 03 is going to lead to switch three. But how can I absolutely verify that? It's a great command that we keep coming back to, show CDP neighbor. And I've got something called host2 over there on fast ethernet 0 slash 1. I don't care about that. But I can see very quickly that switch2 or a device called switch2 is hooked up, physically connected to my local switches 0 slash 2 interface. And that's enough for me. And then we see switch3 is on 0, 03. So we are good to go there. Now that we've verified that information, let's get to the configuration at large. First, on the port leading to switch two, I want to allow all my VLAN traffic now and in the future except for VLAN 30. Allowed, and then VLAN is your only option. And here are the options I was telling you about. And like I said, you can use these in any combination you need to to get your particular job done. You can put in the numbers to begin with, the VLAN IDs of the allowed VLAN when this port is in trunking mode. You can list those. Then you can go back and edit the list. You can do the add option to do that. If you want to allow all the VLAN traffic, which is allowed by default, you could use that. Except is what we're going to use. No or none is rather dramatic, or you could also do remove, remove VLANs from the current list. So once you create this list of allowed VLANs, you can also edit it with add and remove. We are going to do accept right now. And then you just put the VLAN IDs of disallowed VLANs when this port is in trunking mode. And I don't think you're going to get anything after that, any kind of confirmation. So we'll go down to 03 and do a switch port trunk allowed VLAN except 20. Now we need to verify this and we're going to do that with show interface trunk. And there you go. And you'll see the third, the second, third and fourth fields have changed. And the first field with mode encapsulation status native VLAN, fortunately for us, that all stayed the same. There was no reason for it to change. But notice the different VLANs allowed on ports two and three now. Be really careful with this in production networks and on the exam. Because on port two, the VLANs allowed are one through 29 and then 31 through 4094. So VLAN 30 is not allowed. And they're on port 3, 1 through 19, and 21 through 4094 are allowed. So very easy to see that VLAN 20 is the one that's disallowed. 
You can see VLANs allowed and active in management, management domain in the next field, port 2, it's 1 in 20, port 3, it's 1 in 30. Looks good to me, and VLANs in spanning tree forwarding state and not pruned, 1 in 20 and 1 in 30. That's also what we want to see. So that all looks good. Now, this is a great way to cut down on unnecessary traffic because we've already filtered some traffic that was going out, didn't need to go out. When it got there, it was going to be dropped anyway. But you've got to watch the big picture with this kind of thing too because if this is all of your network, then what we just did is fine. If in the future though, say a couple of other switches get added, then you might need to go back and edit your work a little bit. And here, switches four and five, we're just going to say they just came online because if they had been there in the first place, we wouldn't have done the filtering because yeah, it's true that switch two doesn't need VLAN 30 traffic. But switch four does and the only way for it to get from switch one to switch four with this topology is through switch two so we would not have done any of this disallowing the same goes on the bottom here switch five needs traffic for vlan 20 switch three doesn't but the only way for it to get from one to five is through three so here we wouldn't have done any filtering but let's say that four and five just came online and now we say hey we got to go back and take off that editing that filtering we did a while back and that's just what we'll do here. We can actually use the interface range command here because we're going to put the same command on each interface. Not a huge range, but it keeps you in practice. And what we're going to do here is use my up arrow, then I'll just go back and look at my choices again. Of course, I want all. And there are no options after that. And we're done. So let's get our config and then our show interface trunk. And you can see we've gone right back to where we were at the beginning. The VLANs allowed 1 through 4094. The VLANs allowed an active and management domain 120 and 30 on each particular port. So we are in good shape there. We're going to stop here for a moment and then do a little more VLAN work before we move on to management and security. That's coming up next.